How's it going guys? Welcome to the video. My name is Gary and I'm here with a follow-up to a YouTube video that I made a couple of years ago about this this amazing uh, effects process of the Boss GT1. You guys, if you're watching this, you, you've probably heard of it. Uh, it's just amazing. It's great. I um, mean, everybody's going on about the Helix and... Uh, you know, Kempers and all that stuff, but uh, this does pretty much everything I'll ever need out of a out of a modelling floor unit. Um, yeah, it saved me a lot of ball ache with gigs where we have to um, go directly into the PA. Maybe it's a small room or maybe there's like a noise limit and things like that. So if you want to go store, if there's just, you know, hardly any space on the stage for proper amps and your proper pedal board and that, just bash this straight in. Watch this video first, by the way, if you've never used one of these before. If you just got it, uh, use this video. But if you're seasoned and you know what you're doing with all the buttons at the top here, then you can dive right straight into this one because today I'm going to teach you how to set up this the Boss GT1 as um, basically a virtual stomp board. Because, and there's the first thing I would mention, the reason I'm doing this video is because most people when they first get this unit, they use it the way that it's set up from the factory. When it comes from the factory, this button is patched down, this button's patch up, and this button is control, but that only gives you one control button. You know, so you've really got to decide what you want the control to do. Most people, most guitar players would probably use that as a boost pedal. Um, maybe you want to add, a bit of, if it, even if it's just volume, you know, you want a volume for a solo. But that just that leaves these two buttons uh, you, almost useless if, you're, if you've got everything in the same patch. Obviously, there's ways and means to do it. Some people use it in different ways. You can go, you can set patches up that are next to each other um, that are very similar. Maybe you go up a patch to add delay, you go down a patch to add, uh, I don't know, compressor or whatever. And that's how some people use it. But the way I use it is I set it up. As you've seen in the other video, that's how I set up the sounds. This is how I set it up. Uh, practically speaking, okay? So, I've already got a patch here set up called Stomp Demo. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll go back to, like, a blank, I'll, I'll make it a blank patch to start off with, alright? So we're starting from absolute scratch here. For some reason, when you set up a blank patch, it already has a preamp there. And again, in the other video, I've showed you how to set up all the effects on here uh, to the way that you might want them for whatever particular sound you're into, acid jazz or, you know, death metal or whatever. But today I'm going to be showing you how to assign, that is the word of the day, how to assign what these pedals actually do. You can change almost everything. You can change them to do anything you want. Uh, first of all, your tuner pedal, your tuner here is pressing both of these buttons at the same time. Now you can, as you can assign any um, you can assign any of these three buttons to be the tuner, but it doesn't make any sense to do that, in my opinion, because then you're using up one button for what you can already do with these two, right? So you don't really need to, uh, you don't need to reassign the tuner. Second thing I would say, first of all, uh, second thing I would say, first of all, doesn't make sense, is set up your pedal here to not be, this is how I do it. I, I don't use it as a volume pedal. I don't use it, um for anything when it's off, all right? Because if you accidentally, I set, I set this button as my boost pedal, so in the heat of the moment when you're jumping about and you want to go from a, a chorus to a, a chorus sound to a solo, or you want to go from the verse to the chorus, you basically, anytime you press this button, if you're jumping on it and you're flying about the stage, you come over and you dive on it, what happens if you press, accidentally press both of them at the same time? That means your your boost will go on, but your volume will be off. So yeah, you kind of it's a moot it's a moot point. So what I do first of all is I'll go into memory edit and I'll set up what the pedal does. Now that pedal is represented on the memory edit screen uh, by this button here. Sorry, uh, expression one, right? Uh, expression one ex one is this, and you want to go into that. And it's preset to pedal effects slash foot volume. Now, I usually just set that to pedal effects, which means that when it's off, as in when that red light's not on, uh, when it's not on, it'll be, uh, it'll, it'll not do anything. So you can't accidentally knock the volume down, right? So that's the first thing you want to do. You can go out of that back into here and uh, make sure you write patch every single time you do something because if you accidentally turn the knob or go to a different patch and come back, it won't automatically save it. And right, so you need to do that manually by pressing right, which is exit and enter at the same time. In fact, we'll change the name of this patch just now. Right to that selection. I'll just call it I'll just call it G. Right, so <clears throat> that's how we basically set up that. 
Now, what you want to do first of all, uh, what's next of all, is uh, set up what this button does because you don't want to be using that to go down a patch. Now, uh, you want to use this as a, I, te I set it up as a delay. I used to have labels on here, but I took it off for the purposes of this video so that you can see what these what the, what these uh, uh, buttons did do before. So it's down. I set that up to be delay, to turn on and off my delay, okay? Why do I keep going back to... Here we go. So what I'll do here is memory edit. And this is your signal chain here that comes up on the screen. You want to cycle to all the way to the end, nearly. And you see the bit that says down. Uh, you enter into that. See that it's already set up to go number down one, as in down one patch. So you want to use this knob here to go down to delay. Enter. Actually, what you need to do as well as that is change this from momentary to toggle, which means it'll stay on. If you have it as momentary, it means the effect will only work when you're pressing the button down, which, for all intents and purposes, is quite pointless in this when we're using it like this. So, go down and then you want to cycle along to up, which is this button here. Uh, enter, and you do the same thing. Go back, and I want to set that pedal to work as my effects too, which will either be usually tremolo or chorus, or maybe flange or a phase or something like that. Enter. Oh, you don't have to press enter. You just go switch that to toggle as well. Come out of that. Now, we want to change what this button does as well. CTL1, which as I said, most people would set up as the boost, and I do as well. Uh, so CTL1 is CT1 on here. We'll go in there, and it's currently set up in this patch as a preamp solo, but I want to change that to be my overdrive slash boost, overdrive slash distortion. It's already set to toggle, so we can exit out of that, which means that now, if we exit all the way out here, when I press this, it turns on the delay. When I press this, it turns on my effects, 2 slash mod, modulation, and when I press this, it turns on my overdrive distortion, right? Right? makes things a lot easier but then you're like you might be thinking well what if I do want to go up and down between patches do I have to bend over let's just save that again do I you know I'm gonna to have to bend over and use this knob here which again you can assign any of these knobs to do this but I've got it that's set there as patch change so I need to turn over turn this knob to go through the patches but no never fear for the FS7 is here you could also use one of these obviously it's got a larger footprint so it's kind of wasted space on the floor. The FS6 there does exactly the same job as the FS7. So I went and for the, I went and got the FS7. You will need a stereo jack cable, a stereo patch cable. That is, I hope that uh, is in focus there. It's a double tip there because it's got two buttons on it. So it's like one rim, one ring pair, uh, one ring, one one. <laughs> The ring is for one of the buttons and the tip is for the other one, okay? So this is where it gets a little bit confusing because CT2... Well, you just need to remember really that CT2 is control 2 is going to be this button here, the bottom one, and CT3 is going to be the top one, okay? So I've got CT2. You go into CT2 and you set that to number minus 1. So you know you're always going down in the number of patches using the bottom button here. And uh, exit out of that, switch to CT3. And you know that if you press the top one, you're always going to be going up a patch, okay? So we'll exit out of that. As I said, you can actually set these to do anything. But, uh, like, you can you can change the overall volume, uh, tuner, pedal effects, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like I say, the possibilities are endless. Uh, but just remember that the top button, if you are using the FS7, the top button is CTL3 and the bottom one is CTL2. So you want to make sure that they correspond properly on here to either up or down. So exit all the way out of that. Save again. Now the main question you might have right now is why bother uh, reassigning your patch up and downs to the external foot switch as opposed to just using these? Well, that's a good question. And uh, the reason being that you might not always want to use this. You might not. You might know that you're playing a gig where you only need the basic you know, just the one boost, you know, one modulation, one delay. So in that case, you wouldn't even need to set the pe set the pedal up and you've still got everything you need for that patch on your board. You know, there's your boost, there's your modulation, there's your delay. 
Uh, and you've also got your wah here, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and if you want to plug this in, if you've got multiple patches set up, let's just say you want to create a similar patch to that. We'll write that to the next one up. But with this patch on number 44, you might want to have a different kind of distortion sound for your boost. I don't know. I go in there and we'll change that to a rat or something like that. Okay. Save that. And that means you can just go down in patches and you can use the original patch, which I'd set up as an OD uh, overdrive, which would be the OD1. And if you go up the patch to the next one to use a 44, that means your boost is going to be a rat, okay? And by the way, when you copy your patches like that, it remembers your assigns. So if I was to copy that, what I tend to do is I'll set up a patch like that uh, and assign everything to the uh, FS7. Uh, well, the up and downs to the FS7. And then I'll copy that across like 10 patches, you know. So that I'll always know where my base is. Where the, where the basic sounds and the basic signs are all there. So, But one thing to remember is it also it also remembers when you copy a patch. It also remembers what whether the buttons are on and off. So you really want to have... I mean, it's all... It just depends how you use it, but... Uh, you want to, I tend to make sure that all the buttons are off when uh, all the effects are off when I'm uh, saving the patch. Okay, so we'll take that up and we'll, we'll put that in 45. And uh, the, so, what I want to talk about next is the pedal effects. So, if you want to change what the pedal effects, uh, your expression pedal, integrate the integrated expression pedal does, go into memory edit. So, the next the second one along as standard. Uh, you can move them, by the way. You can move the pedal to be, you know, anywhere in the chain. You can move any of them. I showed you that in the last video. Pedal effects, we'll go in there, and we can change it from being a, a cry wah to, let's just say you wanted to use a pedal bend, which is basically your uh, Digitech whammy. And you can change anything on here that you could also change on a Digitech whammy. So you can actually change how many semitones up and down the octave it goes. And you can change the mix level. Um, and you can change the pedal position there as well. Um, let's go back. So we've changed that now. So when that button is on, it will act as a whammy uh, just for this patch. So let's write that in there. But another thing I would like to mention, and this is just a personal thing. Uh, this is how I use it. If you if you go to FV, which means foot volume, enter. Uh, I tend to set the minimum to 100 because you don't want to accidentally be, you know, uh, jumping on that and you turned off the volume. So I tend to put the foot volume up to uh, 100 so that at any point in its sweep, it's still at maximum volume. There is another way to do this. You can go to, yeah, we did that earlier in my expression one and it's set up as pedal effects. So when it's off, as in when that red light is off, it doesn't do anything, all right? It doesn't function as a volume. You might want to keep that on. Some people like to like, like to have a volume. I've never owned a volume pedal. I tend to use the volume on the guitar. Uh, but if you like using the volume pedal, you could you could just leave it as it is, and it'll turn on and off and switch between either a volume and a wah or a volume and a whammy. You could do that as well. But like I said, when you're bouncing about the stage, if you've got this one set up as your boost pedal, uh, you could accidentally hit it, and it'll turn off your volume. So I tend to just not use that. And you may go, well, Gary, if that's a problem for you, why don't you just assign your boost to this one? Uh, and my answer to that is, well, on a real pedal board, your boost wouldn't be at the end of the chain like this is here. That's where the delay goes. That's your modul modulation, and that's your boost. I just like to picture it as a real pedal board. In fact, before I did this video, I had the stickers up here. I think it said, said delay, chorus, and boost. Uh, but I took it off just so that you could see what the original... Um, functionality of the pedals were. So that's basically the video today guys. I hope that was of use to you. Like I say, check out the other video if you want a more comprehensive uh, idea as to how to set up the actual sounds that occur when these pedals go on and off and indeed your preamp settings. Um, I've had the preamp switch on today because uh, well, it doesn't even matter if it's on or off really for the, for the purposes of this because I'm not demoing any sounds. I'm just showing you how to set up the board. But if you are, just another note, and something I sometimes forget, if you are using the preamp, as in if you're going straight into a PA or your recording software or whatever, 
make sure you press uh, menu output and tell the pedal what it's going into. This is some I've come a cropper many times with this one when I forget to tell the pedal whether it's going into an amp or into a PA or in the recording gear, and it just sounds crap if you don't set it up correctly. It'll tell it'll have a wee icon in the top corner here that like to be an amp, as it says there, um, which you would for which you would have the preamp off, um, or it'll be headphones. As you can see there, if you have if you have the preamp on, make sure when you're saving the patches though that you've either got the preamp on or off, as in you know when you're saving it so that it knows um, to to keep that to keep that on or off. Anyway, I'm blabbering now, guys. I'll let you go. Thanks very much for watching the video. Check out my other videos. I've got loads of original music. I do loads of streaming on Twitch TV slash Mexigari. Uh, leave a comment below. If I've missed anything or if you've got any ideas as to other little tri tips and tricks for this amazing wee board, the GT1. and uh, But yeah, that's just another way you can use it as a live board. If you've got the FS7 there, it makes it even more uh, versatile, you know. Or indeed, if you've got the FS6 as pictured here, you can also use that. But like I say, I prefer the, the 7 because of the smaller footprint. So, I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.